What is up, everyone? First and foremost, I am back with Tim in the studio. You've already been back for some weeks now, all I by have. your lonesome in this big, scary studio. It's been a lonely place. But now I am back here with you. Welcome back, Eris. Thank you, Tim. Good Thank to have you. you back at the party. We are now, once again, a whole team. And I feel like Warner Brothers and Zack Snyder were like, you know what? It Just to they celebrate. Yeah, to celebrate you being back in mm -hmm. studio, Eris, even though we don't know who the heck you are, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to make a massive <laughs> announcement. And that announcement. I see the way I see it is the to celebrate Tim not being alone anymore. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> you're, try, you're trying to make it all about you now. That's right. I got to flip the script. <laughs> anyway, of course, we are talking about Warner Brothers announcing and Zack Snyder announcing they are officially going to be releasing the Snyder Cut in 2021 on HBO Max. Hashtag the Snyder Cut released. I can't. I mean, I, um, I half can believe it and I half can't believe it. I mean. The internet did it. You guys did it. Mm -hmm. The internet did mm -hmm. it. It is remarkable. We were talking uh, before this, uh, you know, right before we started recording, and nothing like this has ever happened before. No. Like, you're no. literally talking about them basically redoing yeah. an entire movie. The closest thing that you can cite is what everybody's talking about is the Sonic movie. Yeah. That's the closest thing you can cite. And I had a couple of people say to me on social media over the, the last day that, uh, oh, this has happened before. You know, the so this happened with uh, Sonic the Hedgehog and the fans, you know, forced them to change the, the way he looks. And, I'm, and my response to that is... You, you don't know. No, mm -hmm. this is nowhere near or like Sonic is nowhere near as big as right. this situation. Like the, the you're talking about two years over two years, almost it's two and a half years mm -hmm. of fans relentlessly pushing this idea um, to finally get the studio to really display to the studio and to the industry. Um, the demand that it exists for this thing. Because the only reason they're doing it is because of money. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> we've, that is the main thing that we've talked about is like they are going to have to see the value in it before they will do anything at all. Mm -hmm. And because of the amount of money, and we'll get into that, the amount of money that was uh, going to have to go into this thing. But I mean, first and foremost, like you were leading off with, uh, congratulations to Zack Snyder. Yeah. Right? For him getting to show his whole vision finally. And more importantly, the biggest congratulations is due to all of the fans who never gave up on the mm -hmm. idea and pushed and pushed and pushed. Um, and as, many, as much as including us, we're just like, give it a rest with the release of Snyder Cut. You guys never gave up and you are actually going to get what you've wanted. Now, we don't yeah. know yet if this is going to be like feed the trolls.com <laughs> like release uh, the beast where this is going to make that worse while it's easy to just look at that in a negative way you can also look at that in a very positive way and like you said we'll get into that in a little bit we're going to kind of break this down piece by piece because we do have quite a few things to say about it yeah the i do want to say too because like you know in congratulating all the fans and stuff i, I know me and you too like I wasn't part of the whole release of Snyder Cut no. stuff. Now, with that said, of course, I said it in the past several times. Of course, I want to see it. Why would I not mm -hmm. want to see it? For better or worse, I just want to see what his vision was. But I definitely was not picketing, being like, release the Snyder Cut, release the Snyder Like, that wasn't me. But I am very happy that we are going to get yep. to see uh, his vision now. And the thing that's crazy about it, the thing that's kind of perplexing me is HBO and Warner Brothers in their statement said that it's going to be four hours long. Now, whether it's going to be released as a four hour long movie mm -hmm. or six individual episodes, you know, kind of like a mini series style, mm -hmm. uh, that's yet to be determined. But four hours, I, I was telling you before mm -hmm. we started recording, to me, that sounds like he basically shot Justice League part one and two in one shot. Now, mm -hmm. I don't think that's the case. It's not. But so. One movie, yep. four hours long. Does that mean his his two part? Because he originally wanted to do part one and two. Mm -hmm. Does that mean together that would have been like eight hours long? You know what I mean. You're talking about like two movies as long as three Hobbit films, <laughs> pretty much. Like that, some Peter Jackson stuff right there. He was going all in, and and you know that isn't new news. That that isn't so, you know something that just came out. We've known for a long time that his original cut was four hours, but it's mind boggling. It is. It was crazy when we and first it, it, learned it, it, it all the way back when the Justice League was first in production, um, or in post production rather. We learned that his first cut was four hours, and that he actually trimmed it down because the studio was looking for a cut that was closer to around two hours. Mm -hmm. So his compromise was like two and a half. 
and he presented them with his first rough cut of like two and a half hours and they still didn't all like it. And there was a lot to do with, you know, a lot to do on it. And then everything unfortunately happened with his daughter and, you know, it kind of went from there. Uh, the rest, as we all know, is history, sort of a speak. Um, but the, the fact that he is actually, after all these years, he's actually going to get to show not the appease the studio version of his vision, but the entirety of of his Justice League vision, the whole four-hour epic, mm -hmm. um, man, not a lot of creators actually get to do that, uh -huh. except for like the legends, right? right the yeah. legends, the, the the Ridley Scotts of the world, Spielberg, those guys, they can make a four-hour movie. Marty Scorsese does it all the time. They can make a three, four-hour movie whenever they want, mm -hmm. and the, you know nobody's going to say anything. They can't. Yeah. Right. But uh, the fact that he gets to do that, that's a really big deal. And again, that's it's a testament to the fans on that one. And what's cool, you know, speaking of the fans, obviously, like both of us are fans first and foremost. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, while I wasn't the one, you know, out there being like, let's get it. I still really want to see it just sure. because I want to know what he's going to do. But with that, you know, over the past two and a half years, you know, part of the reason why we're getting this is because, yes, the fans have been relentless, but so has Zack Snyder. So he's oh, been yeah. taking to social media almost like every other week, giving us a new uh, picture of Batman, Superman, even Martian Manhunter, yep. uh, Darkseid, telling us the Green Lantern uh, or Green Lanterns were going to be in it. So now we're going to get to see all that. So remember, if you, uh, like a few podcasts ago, I was like, we're never going to get to see Martian Manhunter, <laughs> or at least not anytime soon on the big screen. Uh, but now we're going to get his version of Martian Manhunter. Right. We're going to see... Uh, his dark side, uh, Green Lanterns, more of that. Maybe how Jordan pops in, we don't know, but we're mm -hmm. going to get more Green Lanterns. I'm just curious to see how much of that we're going to see. Because while they're going to be in the movie, this is still part one of what was supposed to be a two-story arc. Mm -hmm. So are we even going to get much dark side, or is he just going to be the big tease at the end? And we're going to be like, oh my gosh, and then the new hashtag is going to be shoot <laughs> Justice League Part 2 <laughs> or something to that effect. It's you know? going to be interesting because it's all going to depend on the success of this thing. And there's there's a lot to be said uh, for that, and I, I think we both want to get into that here. But let's get into it in the back end. First, I want to address... A couple of things, because like everybody else, mm -hmm. everybody, this was such a big deal to release the Snyder Cut movement. It was such a, everybody in geekdom has weighed in on this oh, for sure. at one time or another, and we're no exception to that. Mm -hmm. So I want to touch on uh, some things because I know we're likely going to get called out because there were some things that we said back in November on you two mean, separate the episodes. Internet? I know. It's a, it's a crazy internet. notion. It'll never happen. They don't call people out. They also <laughs> don't make hashtags to make these movies happen again. <laughs> so before the comments start, we're going to address it up front and acknowledge what we got right and what we got wrong. Okay. All right. It's only fair. That's what we do here. We're honest. <laughs> so going back all the way to November 11th, we did an episode where we first addressed the release, the Snyder Cut. First, I, I just need to comment that I love that you went back and got the exact dates and everything. Oh, yeah. Professional. Time. You, you know Professional. what I do. You know how I do. <laughs> so, but in that episode, we said this. So I want to see it, but I'm just like, at the same time, it's almost like beating a dead horse where I'm like, I want to see it, but I don't think Warner Brothers is ever going to give it to us. And I'm just, I'm just a little over it. Justice League, it, it appears to be an entirely different movie. Mm -hmm. Completely. So, you know, the, it doesn't appear that the VFX were finished and there's a lot of work that would still have to do with it, which makes uh, is another thing that falls in the category of very unlikely to happen. Because they would have to Because Warner Brothers would have to pour money. millions and millions mm -hmm. of dollars into finishing it to even be able to release it. I mean, it would be a great, you know, offer of goodwill to fans, but just, again, the amount of money that would have to go into that, they would have to reassemble the entire crew, they'd have to bring Zack Snyder, all the cast back in to, to clean it up. There's just no way. So, right off the bat... We said it. We said it was unlikely. Ne In fact, I said yep. at one point, it's never going to happen. Okay, <laughs> it, Basically proving the never say That's never never say motto. never. Yeah. <laughs> right. So we were wrong initially, and we, we own but, up. We were wrong. But, but there's a big but. There is a gigantic <laughs> but. Because after we shot that episode, mm -hmm. we rethought it. Right? Yep. And we came back two episodes later on November 25th. Episode five, right? It was episode five right. of the podcast, and we readdressed everything. And after rethinking about it, we said these things. 
HBO Max makes, makes the most sense, which of course we agree. Mm-hmm. Not only does it make the most sense in terms of where they release it, but it could be if it's successful because it's going to have a huge audience. All the people that have been pushing for it to get released and then you're going to have all the curious people. Yes. Right. That are going to come out. So if it's wildly successful, maybe they could use this because they need content. Everybody needs content now. Mm-hmm. They could use this to let Zack Snyder come back even and finish out his vision as an Elseworld story. But with that Elseworlds take on it, that is, that would be awesome. But if he went and he said, look, let us finish this and make it a piece of content, exclusive content to HBO Max when it, com- Max when it comes out. Again, if popular, that could be a massive boost to their subscriptions. It's true. So that would motivate them to say, we'll put in 15, 20, 50 million. Or what if they, do, they say, what if you let us shoot it as a film, but we break it into eight episodes and it becomes like a series. Almost like Watchmen style. Right. Right. And if done right, I think that could be really smart and a fun thing to do. Okay. So as you can see. We're precogs. We are precogs. Precogs, yeah. We did. <laughs> we rethought the whole thing only a couple of episodes later. So while we were very wrong in the sense that of saying never in yes. the first episode. How I will say this, to be fair, when we were talking about it in the first episode, we were only referring to theatrical release and, you know, a broad distribution Blu-ray digital release. Yeah. We were not talking about streaming. We're only referring to the idea of it getting released theatrically or as its own Blu-ray or digital release. We did not think that that was likely to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's important to note because (laughs) the second time we came out and we said a lot of, we said, listen, the one thing that we didn't think of and we're rethinking this whole thing is HBO Max. Streaming services, very, very possible actually. Um, So what I did was I actually made note of the things that we said and I want to compare it to what we know now. You know I love my notes. Uh, it's the only way to keep track of your thoughts. But the uh, I I, I want to go through what we said, what we got right, and what mm. we got wrong and com- in comparison to what we now know with the actual announcements and the release of all the information. So like a geeky version of me checking my SAT scores. Yes, this is going to che- this is going to check it. our stats. <laughs> We're going to see where we got wrong just so we can be clear. Okay, so first and foremost uh, is the fact that we said in both instances, Mm -hmm. one of the big hindrances to this ever getting made was the fact that despite everything that everybody was saying, all of the rumors and the insistence that this was a finished cut waiting to be released, that this was nowhere near done. It had a lot of work left to be done. They were going to have to reassemble cast, crew, and VFX team to Mm -hmm. get this finished. And it was going to cost millions and millions of dollars to finish. That was what we said in both instances. Yes. Regardless of whether we said never going to happen in the first episode or the second where we said actually HBO Max, that is possible. Right? Yes. Well, that one's that's the craziest one to me because, you know, Kevin Smith mm-hmm. went on record that he knew several, several people who worked on the production who basically laid out the entire movie for them and was like, yeah, look, no, it's shot. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean, you know, VFX are done. Yeah. You know, there's tons of green screen, previs, all that stuff. So this proves because... In that HBO or Warner Brothers release, mm-hmm. they said they're going to have to be pouring anywhere from 20 to exactly. $30 million back into exactly. this movie to finish it, which confirms to your the point you know we're trying to make here that there's plenty of the effects that need to be done. There's probably voiceovers from all the actors. Maybe they need, need to get Gail Gadot, Henry Cavill, or Ben Affleck back in to do like a quick scene. You know, that's still $30 million into a film yep. that is already shots so right. the bulk of the money is already there but it still needs an additional 20 to 30 million dollars so that is crazy and that if kevin smith didn't cement it <laughs> before this definitely cements the fact that there was a snyder cut yes. but that doesn't mean it was able to be released and done and perfect it just means stuff was shot but there was lots of people in those uh those little tracking suits you mm-hmm. know where cyborg just looks like a guy in spandex yeah so and when kevin smith said that and because he said that right around the November, the two-year anniversary. Yes. So it was way late in the game as far as the release of Snyder Cut movement, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And when he said that, he wasn't saying it as someone who's seen it. Right. Mm -hmm. He was saying it just as a filmmaker. He was saying the same thing we were saying, Mm -hmm. which was that, listen, that's not how the process works. What he, Zack Snyder is referring to is a rough cut of the film. Mm -hmm. And that is not a finished cut of the film. That is not a final locked cut. 
No. Right? So, or a locked version of the, of the film. So all of this is to say confirmed verdict on what we were saying. True. It was, it is not a finished version and there are tens of millions of dollars that have to go into the film to actually finish the movie. I mean, cause they're also bringing like, not only are they finishing VFX and, you know, probably doing pickup shots and stuff of that. Mm -hmm. They're also rescoring the entire movie. Mm -hmm. So Danny Elfman's yeah. score gone. Gone. He's getting, I uh, believe, XL Junkie, Junkie, XL Junkie XL is coming back and rescoring everything. So it's like, this is literally going to be like a completely different movie. Completely. Just with some, you know, oh, that's the same bat suit, same, you know, flash yeah. suit. But and, that, and they're saying that. They're saying that absolutely openly. They're saying this is going to be a completely you know, different film. Something I did want to add. Did you, did you read somewhere that Zack Snyder himself said to this day he hasn't watched Whedon's cut? Yes, I did he read that. He hasn't seen it. He which, said he hasn't seen it. Which... Is a little weird to me just because he's also said that, you know, the movie was basically like nothing like his. But I'm mm -hmm. like, how would you know that right. if you haven't seen it? So for me, that's kind of conflicting. I, you know, I can't put it past because, you know, one, he was probably intensely frustrated by the entire situation. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think about how much time and effort he's put into Justice League and to the DC universe up to that point, right? Yeah. He had shot the whole movie, right? It mm -hmm. wasn't finished, but he had shot the whole thing. He, you know, he was a part of the entire process. So to see it get dismantled and turned into something else entirely, and this kind of this Frankenstein monster. Because he, um, the reason I say that is because he probably got the script. The script. Mm -hmm. He probably got the script revisions, and so he knows what the movie was. That that actually that that's that's a fair point. If he did yeah. read the script, maybe he read the script and not mm -hmm. watch the movie. Then yes, yeah. I could see that he possibly even okay. saw some dailies and things like that right. to where he got the gist and he's just like, I'm not interested in watching it. I, I, I this is not the, what I intended. It is possible, especially since his wife also. I think she did. She produce the Whedon's cut as well. She, she is. Yeah, she's. Well, I, I don't know if she because I think that they were gone. Oh, they were both. They gone. Were, yeah, okay, they, you know, they were both dealing. with Either the way, since situation. he was still attached in some capacity, it does make sense that he would get a hand of the script. But mm -hmm. you know, initially I was just like, but if you haven't seen the movie, how could you say that? But again, he could have very well got a script. Mm -hmm. So. All right. He no. I'll go he with that. I would say he definitely did. I'll go with that then. Okay. Yeah. So it's definitely <laughs> possible. And like I said, and more importantly, I could I can see that coming from a creator's standpoint of this is something that was never intended. My it was like an abortion of my creation, mm -hmm. right? And I just I'm not interested. Right. You know, unless I can come back and I can I can do something, you know, and finish out my vision. It's like well, why even bother? It's just going to make me matter. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the second thing uh, in the second episode on March on November 25th, mm -hmm. we said the only way that this was going to be possible, the one possibility was HBO Max. Yes. And that was because. HBO, Warner Brothers, which is owned by Warner Brothers, mm -hmm. is uh, they're going to be looking for a draw, something to incentivize people to their platform for new, to, to attract and draw new signups because they've got Netflix and Disney Plus and, you know, the, the Peacock and they've got uh, Apple Plus to, to compete with. Basically, they're like, friends isn't enough. We exactly. need something else. And I think they found it, at least for a the, big piece, at least for the first initial months, because, again, if they, you know, Depending how they release it. So if they do, you know, episodic and they do one a week, yep. they got at least a month and a half of subscriptions because people can cancel any time. So at least for launch, it'll make them look very good because I know yep. there's going to be hundreds of thousands, if not, you know, million plus people that will get it just to watch this version of the movie. I mean, to be true, I was going to get it either way, but this kind of solidified it where last night I actually pre-ordered it and got it at a discounted price for $12 instead of $15 a month. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, yeah, it, I mean, and again, we said it back in the second episode. Mm -hmm. We said that would win Warner Brothers a tremendous amount of goodwill yeah. with the DC fans, mm -hmm. right? And you can already see it. People are just because, and it's to be expected. It's just common sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you are accommodating what they have been asking for. Now they're all going to show up in droves, sign up for the service, and be sitting there ready and waiting when the when the the the, the, the Snyder cut hits. And I like how like all the promo images they released too. Where I was telling you yesterday, I was like, it's really yeah. funny that like Zack Snyder's name is like ten times bigger than even yeah. the word Justice League. It's the marquee. Yeah, it's the marquee of like the yeah. poster. They're like, yeah, yeah, it's the Justice League, but it's Zack Snyder's right. Justice League. <laughs> right. <laughs> but going back to what we said about the it only being possible because of the streaming service. Mm -hmm. Uh, Deborah Snyder, Zack Snyder's wife and co-producer, confirmed 
and said in an article in The Hollywood Reporter that many of you, I'm sure, have read at this point, she confirmed they themselves, in reality, all the way up to this past November, mm -hmm. when they got the call from Toby Eber Emmerich of War at Warner Brothers, yeah. uh, where he said, hey, is this something you would consider? They thought this was never going to happen. That's really funny. Even despite two straight years of him poking and prodding the audience base and the fan base to kind of like keep nudging them in that direction because he knew if this was ever going to be possible, whether that's now or in 20 years, it would only be by keeping people interested. Hence the posting pictures like every other yep. week. He's like, remember, remember this Batman picture you yep. never saw? And, hey. <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> but that the, in in private, they thought this was never going to happen. And that's what they said. And they and she said specifically, almost verbatim, the only reason this is even possible is because of the emergence of the new streaming services and platforms. This would not be possible any other way. Well, I mean, that's kind of like across the board. I mean, as far as like even other series we're getting, like The Mandalorian, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like all these shows, you know, that go straight to streaming. Like most of the most, you know, some of the most popular shows, if not the most popular shows now nowadays are the ones that are only available on Netflix, yep. exclusive to Prime, exclusive to Hulu, Disney Plus. I mean, look at like Mandalorian, Stranger Things. Like these are some of the biggest shows in the world right now. So, I mean, to that point, yeah, streaming is like big dog right now. And it's only a matter of time before, you know, it pretty much all goes streaming. You know, cable's, yeah. cable is trying to hang on. But, you know, Good luck. With, yeah, but with streaming there. It's a matter of time before it's like a bye-bye, I guess. Yeah, it, well, you know, it's everything is moving in that direction for sure. But the last thing that we want to point out that we said, and this we said this very specifically, is I said there's a very big possibility we might not get this as a movie. We might get it as a six to eight episode series. That one is the most interesting thing to me. Yes. Because that means – so the, most of the movie's shot. Obviously, he's going to yep. do pickup shots and stuff like that. But that means a lot of those pickup shots will probably, if they decide to go episodic with it, will have to be, you know, ending it at a point where they could stop it for that week. You know, because mm -hmm. a movie's not like that. You can't right. just like cut it off 45 minutes in and mm -hmm. it all makes sense. You know, the, you know, you have to keep that in mind. So I'm very curious to see which way they're going to go. Yep. I think I would like it more episodic. I feel like that would make more sense. Because uh, me personally, you know, a big reason why I haven't watched uh, rewatched Lord of the Rings, especially the extended cuts, is because they're so freaking long. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I just have like ADD and I can't sit in this chair for four hours straight. So uh, I think I would like it to be weekly. I think that could be cool. I think weekly could be cool. I also think it could be cool if they just dropped it all at once. Mm -hmm. But it just depends. I, if they're going to do it as a series, which there's no guarantee, we want to emphasize that we don't know for sure. But they've made clear that they're debating one. They still have not decided. From a you know, from a business standpoint, it actually the more I th I'm sitting here thinking about it, it makes sense to do episodic, right? Because if you drop yes. it in one shot, people are only going to sign up for that one month. They watched it, they're out. If you do episodic, yep. you're having people not only talking about it from week to week, mm -hmm. you have them there for at least a month and a half, depending how they if it's like biweekly every week. You know what I, I mean? mean? Yes and no, because you have to think. You know, let's say they break it into four episodes, six episodes. Let's say six episodes well, just for the sake of discussion. Well, I believe that's what the article said. Six episodes. Yeah, six yeah, yeah. six episodes. Let's say it's six episodes for the sake of discussion, and they um, they release it one and every one every week. Mm -hmm. Well, you could just arguably wait. You know, you right could. to you, and, could. you know sign up. You keep it for six weeks or two months, and then you just. But the it's, die it's only difference fans, of the diehard fans aren't going to do that, though. There's no way. No, but I'm. That's what I'm saying. Like the chances are, if you once you get on there, you're saying once you're on, it's gonna. You're more. You're not as likely to cancel your subscription. Correct. Once they got you, they got you for correct. The most part. Because they're hoping they they're wanting to use that as an incentive just to get you there, and then it's all the other content is mm. what's going to keep you there. I do like watching Friends. Yeah, <laughs> because you have to realize. Yeah. They've also got a Green Lantern television show coming, mm -hmm. right? And they're developing other DC content. So they're hoping to be able to. That's why they're not doing, you know, they're not trying to push it to come out this year. They're trying to do it for 2020 and 20, uh, or 2021 rather, mm -hmm. because that's going to be closer to when they're going to be dropping other DC content. So those DC fans that they're bringing on now with the Justice League, they're hoping to keep them by saying, we've got other content coming. You know, that no, sort true. of thing. It's very smart. Yeah, especially for, you know, you know, people like you and me who, you know, we talk about this stuff like mm -hmm. every week. It's like 
we have to get it. It's not even like an option, like right. love it or hate it. Like we have to get it. Obviously, we would either way. We would either but, way. But you know, that, that's not the that's not the point. One thing I did want to bring up though that I found very interesting is ten minutes after this uh, broke, uh, you know, online and was everywhere. Uh, the guy who plays Deathstroke, Joe Mag. I always forget his last name. I, I can't. Re- I can yeah. never pronounce it. I know it, but I can't pronounce it. He pl- he also played Flash Thompson in the first uh, Sam Raimi Spider Man. Yeah, that's movie. right. Anyway, as we all know, he was geared up to be Deathstroke. He was in the end credit scene of Justice League. Um, they were gonna do a solo movie uh, with him and or a movie with him in Batman. And he took to Twitter literally ten minutes after this announcement and just said the original end credit scene. Dot dot dot. So that immediately got everyone thinking, because we know prior, remember, back in the day, this is all when the DCU was like, you know, we were, we were getting our stuff, they had a solid plan, and we're like, oh, Ben Affleck is going to star as Batman, he's going to direct Batman, mm-hmm. and Deathstroke is going to be the antagonist for that movie. So obviously, everyone immediately is like, okay, so does that, so if the, so the one we got was Deathstroke meeting up with Lex, mm-hmm. you know, hinting to a possible Legion of Doom later right, on in the right. franchise, that's the one that Whedon did. So there's an original one that Whedon didn't use. Everyone's now thinking, does that mean the original one is probably a standoff between Deathstroke and Batman setting up for the solo Batfleck movie we were supposed to get with Deathstroke in it? That'll be amazing. We're going to find out. We're going to find out. And I can't. Is it odd that I'm more excited for that little 30 second (laughs) spot? (laughs) I just I think this this leads to my biggest curiosity is where it all leads if are they going to how are they going to release it are they going to include things like that the fact that they let him release that tends to make me think no that's something that's going to get cut out of the film because they've already moved in the direction of Matt Reeves the Batman and they don't really have any intentions at least now but that's another thing with this cut too right like again the release of the movie but is it all for naught minus the fact that we just want to see it? Like, because again, it could end on a massive cliff cliffhanger where Darkseid's like going to war with the Justice League mm-hmm. and that's it. That doesn't necessarily mean they're going to let him continue the next one. Now, right. depending how this goes, as we now know, anything is possible. So, you know, we can't say it won't happen. Right. But, you know, it doesn't mean it's going to happen, right. especially with Matt Reeves' Batman movie. We don't know what's going behind the scenes now with Aquaman 2 is already mm-hmm. in motion. Uh, Shazam Part 2 is in motion. Black Adam's in motion. So we don't uh, you know know what's going to happen. Right. Are they going to shift all their plans they just kind of started, they just kind of made again and then reshift it back to you know Snyder's like kind yep. of version? I don't know. And there's a lot to speculate and talk about about possibilities of possibly alternate universes in this in the DC cinematic world, like right? Different Earths. There's mm-hmm. different all <laughs> kinds of different speculation, and we're actually going to get into that in the upcoming podcast. So we're not we don't have time to do it today. No. So if you if you're interested in hearing us ramble on about that of what could be coming, I'm actually really excited about that one because obviously I got some theories go go. Going yeah. on and some things they could do yep. because like the possibilities are endless. The crazy thing is we've talked about this forever. They could still fix everything that they wanted with Flashpoint. Flashpoint could fix anything because they haven't used it yet, meaning they still have that rabbit in their hat. Yeah. They could pull out whenever they want to reset it. So if this goes well, theoretically, they could just be like Flashpoint and make it all intertwine again with this. Absolutely. But again, save the, the majority of that we'll for see. the podcast. Like, yeah. if, so if, you're, if you're interested in hearing us ramble on about the, the our speculations about what could be theories and yeah. all that kind of stuff, make sure you check out the podcast this coming up week where we're going to get into all that. But to wrap all of this up, our, our, our thoughts and the verdict on how we'd fared mm-hmm. in the great speculation of release the Snyder Cut, um, we were initially wrong about when we said we don't think it's going to happen. Right. But then we got a lot right on the second half. Um, but overall, we both just really fall into the category of we're really happy that it actually came through, that Warner Brothers has, are accommodating fans. They're they're giving fans what they asked for. But also, I'm really happy for Zack Snyder that he gets to finish his vision, especially because everything that happened with it happened because of a really dark mm-hmm. time in their family and it was really deeply sad and unfortunate and i think this could be a really 
cool healing thing for their family. Oh, for sure. Uh, so I'm really happy for him. I'm happy for fans. And congratulations to everybody involved. Congratulations to Warner Brothers for having the balls uh, to actually do it. But also yeah. seeing the value in it and the potential future for the uh, yeah, HBO Max. Let's not get it twisted. They're like dollar yeah. signs all there. But again, no, they had to be, you know, they had to commit to it. And it mm -hmm. is it is going to be nice for us fans to see it. And, you know, it's it's crazy. It actually happened. And yeah. You know, this could be, for better or worse, this could be changing the game of yeah. how how these geeky franchises get made and how much they do listen to fans. Because I know that's been a big thing for years. It's like, why don't you just do it like the comic? Just listen to us. We've The reason why these characters are popular is because we bought the comics for so many years. Yeah. So why would you then go be like, oh, no, but we can make it better. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it, is a, it is a good time for us nerds. I will say that. You're absolutely right. And I, I've said uh, one of the things I posted out you know we both were tweeting and stuff about it and my thing has been what a testament this is to the power of the audience i said it at the beginning of the episode here um but also uh, we're constantly talking about here the streaming wars <laughs> and how and i just this is such a statement and such a a mile marker for a lot of the stuff that we have just been talking endlessly about, about how many opportunities yeah. this is going to open up for filmmakers, creator, you know, content creators, yep. um, just storytellers in general. The streaming wars is going to create so many opportunities that never existed before. And Deborah Snyder, uh, Deborah Snyder spoke directly to that and confirmed that herself, even from the Hollywood side of all of this, uh, in you know, when all of this broke. Uh, and that is, we're going to see this ramp up and it's just going to present, we're going to get some really, really cool content that we would have never gotten otherwise, um, because of the streaming war. So for me, this is just really exciting, cool news. I mean, for all of us, <laughs> <laughs> just you, you're the just only one's going to, I'm the only one who cares. See it. Uh, but with all that said, we're going to continue this conversation in more depth and theories and nerdy goodness in next week's podcast. So definitely look for that on our variant, the podcast channel yes. as well as Spotify, uh, iTunes, Google play, yep. all of that stuff. But until then, we'll see you guys next time when we talk about all things comics.